Welcome to Hymn Stories, a podcast about how our songs of the faith came to be and how they've encouraged, comforted, and strengthened believers like you and me. Hymn Stories is a part of the Media Gratier Podcast Network. My name is Ryan Bush. John Berridge was born in February 1716 at Kingston, Nottinghamshire. He was the son of a rich farmer, and his father did not desire to bind his son to the plow, so he sent him off to school to become, as he said, a light to the Gentiles. J.C. Ryle later wrote that John Berridge was a mighty instrument for good. Ryle was right, but that's not the whole story. John Berridge entered Cambridge College and quickly gained recognition for his ability wit, and humor. There he studied in preparation for the work of the ministry. After completing his studies, he took up his first charge at Stapleford, England. When Berridge was a child, he had been awakened to a sense of his own sinfulness, but that conviction of sin led him only to a high estimation of his own good works. In other words, it led him to nothing at all. Now, Berridge was laboring in Stapleford as a minister without knowing the way of salvation. After six years there, he could point to no fruit. No souls had been brought to Christ. He later said, God would have shown me that I was not wrong by not owning my ministry, but I paid no regard to this for a long time, imputing my want of success to the naughty hearts of my hearers, and not to my own naughty doctrine, that we are to be justified partly by our faith and partly by our works. In 1755, he entered a new post in Everton, where he continued in his feeble and faulty ministry, devoid of power. Berridge reported, I began to be discouraged, and now some secret misgivings rose in my mind that I was not right myself. Those misgivings grew stronger, and at last very painful, being then under great doubts. I cried unto the Lord very earnestly. The constant language of my heart was this, Lord, if I am right, keep me so. If I am not right, make me so. Lead me to the knowledge of the truth as it is in Jesus. John cried out to the Lord in this way for ten days. Then the Lord answered. It happened like this. John was sitting in his house one morning reading a text of Scripture. Suddenly, a phrase darted into his mind with wonderful power. To John, it seemed like a voice from heaven. It said, Cease from thy works. As soon as he heard these words, his soul was thrown into a tempest, and the tears flowed from his eyes like a torrent. The scales fell from his eyes, and he saw clearly for the first time the rock to which he had been anchored for nearly thirty years. What was that rock? It was his secret reliance on his own works for salvation. The Lord opened John Berridge's heart to the gospel and granted him faith and repentance. To use the language of Thomas Wilcox, Before that morning, Berridge had not the blood of Christ at the root of his profession. Therefore, it withered and proved to be a cheap decorative suit to wear on his way to hell. I love Wilcox's little book called A Choice Drop of Honey from the Rock of Christ. It was written for men like Berridge. And... For people like you and me, for we all have a tendency toward self-righteousness. Wilcox wrote, You come empty-handed and take all out of God's hand. For Christ is the gift of God. Faith is the gift of God. Pardon is a free gift. How nature storms, frets, rages at this. All is a free gift. Nothing can be purchased by our actions, tears, and duties, for all workings are excluded and are of no value in heaven. John Berridge's preaching changed immediately and became a power of righteousness. The effect on his congregation was swift. They called upon him, one after another, all brokenhearted, confessing their lost condition, seeking the Savior. You 
You may think that John was overjoyed at such a response, but it actually sank him into the dust of shame and self-abasement. He could see what a blind leader of the blind he had been for so long. John immediately burned all of his old sermons, and with tears of joy, he witnessed their destruction. In the month of November, 1758, John Wesley happened along and was greatly moved by the work of grace in and through Barrage. They became warm friends, and Wesley wrote vividly in his journals about what he saw in Everton. John Barrage preached on average 10 or 12 sermons a week and traveled hundreds of miles. He experienced astounding success and endured fierce opposition. For 30 years, his enemies called him that old devil. In 1785, he published Sion's Song, or the alternate title, which is a bit longer, Hymns Composed for the Use of Them That Love and Follow the Lord Jesus Christ in Sincerity. I like the second title. He had written the verses in that volume during a six-month illness. One of those hymns has endured and continues to help believers cling to the author and finisher of their faith. It's called Jesus Cast a Look on Me. Jesus cast a look on me Give me sweet simplicity Make me poor and keep me low Seeking only the know All that feeds my busy pride Cast it evermore aside Bid my will to thine submit Lay me humbly at thy feet Make me like a little child Of my strength and wisdom spoiled Seeing only in thy light Walking only in thy might John Barrage was 76 years old when death arrived. In his last hours, a friend who was near said to him, The Lord has enabled you to fight the good fight. John answered, Blessed be his name for it. Jesus will soon call you up higher. John replied, I, 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 higher, higher, higher. Yes, and my children too will shout and sing, Here comes our Father. Before John Barrage went to heaven, he asked that these words be written on his tombstone. Here lie the earthly remains of John Barrage, late vicar of Everton and an itinerant servant of Jesus Christ, who loved his master and his work, and after running his errands many years, was called up to wait on him above. Reader, art thou born again? No salvation without a new birth. I was born in sin, February 1716, remained ignorant of my fallen state till 1730, lived proudly on faith and works for salvation till 1751, admitted to Everton Vicarage, 1755, fled to Jesus alone for refuge, 1756, fell asleep in Christ Jesus, January 22nd, 1793. Thank you for joining me in this episode of Hymn Stories. May the Lord bless you and keep you as you sing and make a melody in your heart to Him.